Well, greetings and salutations, everyone, and welcome back to today's Saturday bonus. Before we jump into this very interesting bonus, a couple links. As many of you know, I rely on Patreon, PayPal, channel membership, and the merch to help the channel to continue to grow and go. Links to Patreon, PayPal, channel membership is in the description below. Merch displayed directly under the video. Also, Dogman Frightening Encounters, Volume 1 through 3, the audiobook versions. They were written and researched by Tom Lyons, narrated and produced by me, Jeff Nadolny. Those audiobooks are available on Audible, Amazon, and iTunes, links to which are also in the description as well. And finally, last but definitely not least, if you'd really like to help support the channel to continue to grow and go, simply subscribe. It doesn't cost you a cent. Click that like button. Takes half a second. If you don't want to miss out on any of the informative uploads I put out daily, click that bell icon. Yeah, and folks, please leave a comment. Why? Well, because all these things really do help this channel to continue to grow and go. And yes, they do matter. Now, everyone, I've taken far too much of your time. Let's jump into this bonus. Shall we? Agenda 2030, which would be Agenda 21. Um, and I started to think about things, how what we have going on in modern day is almost like the start of Agenda 2030 uh, with the monetary thing. Well, one of the biggest things nowadays is Bitcoin. Um, Bitcoin is worth more than gold. That's very strange. There is no monetary backing behind it either. It's just Bitcoin. So there's proof right there that, you know, the euro didn't work through the, you know, they wanted the European Union wanted it to spread through Europe as the main currency didn't work so nwo or the elite created bitcoin to be possibly the main currency of the new world i don't know just something i was thinking about um we had the covid 19 lockdown vaccination um a lot of focus on a bunch of those things three things right there the lockdown the vaccine and covid itself um which is not not very healthy to focus on to focus on how to get better if it you know, was as deadly, and I have lost friends to this disease or virus, but, you know, I think it was something to keep us distracted. Um, when we're not distracted, we can focus on what's going on. Um, presidents use wars to do that when they want to do something real nasty, hence the Biden wanting to be involved in the Ukraine. We have no business being anywhere near that area of the world right now. We're already spread too thin. We just we just got our, and I hate saying this because <laughs> we lost a lot of fine young men and women during the last, what, 30 years of war in the Middle East. But we pretty much got our butts handed to us by people who live in huts and believe in beating women and having some kind of obscure view. I'm not insulting Muslim. I'm not. I'm so, I'm, right now I'm saying something about the people, the populace who we fought, Al-Qaeda, the Taliban, um... I'm not, please don't take this like I'm insulting anyone 
that is Muslim because I know one person, I know two people who are Muslim and they are very decent people. Um, what I'm referring to is we just got our butts kicked for 30 years by a bunch of long beard wearing, no showering, sandal wearing people who live in caves. And now we want to go against a country that is almost equally as powerful as us, if not maybe a little more. I'm not really sure because I don't think anyone knows what they have. They don't know what exactly what we have. Um, so right there, there's another kind of factor to keep us distracted. The, uh, I think the controlling of I or our freedom of speech perfect example recent perfect example Nancy Pelosi telling the athletes in the Olympics that they cannot speak out against the atrocities against human in China that's that's controlling of our free speech and that is wrong um, you know, I mean, I don't suggest speaking out while you're in China, but if that's something that you want to do, then by all means do it. I mean, I'm sure there's going to be some repercussions, but you know, that's on you. Um, there's just a real lot of stuff that if you look at it, you can almost step back and be like, wow, this makes no sense. Um, I was talking to somebody today and a very interesting subject came up. Uh, now we talk about these conspiracies, um, these secret societies, this, this, and that, and they being the ones who control all, um, my grandfather was a Freemason, so and he was one of the nicest guys I've ever met. He worked hard his whole entire life. He worked at GE as a an electrician. Um, not rich at all, but he was a Freemason. And, um, you know, when he passed, I got his ring, I got his Bible, and I got his sword. Um, but... The American government and our presidents, they embrace these secret societies. And I was reading somewhere where in Russia, these secret societies were hunted down. And this person that I was talking to said, maybe we are the bad guys. Not us, not America as a whole, but the powers that be are the bad guys. And we're just picking a fight, and we've always picked this fight with the Soviet Union because they could see these secret societies for what they were, and they could almost see the um, the American elite for what they are dangerous. I don't know. Just a conversation and something for you guys to think about. But, you know, we talked about the control of food and land and this and that and uh, genetically modified plants and stuff, uh, crops and harvest. This is interesting. Check this out. Bill Gates reveals reasons behind massive farmland purchases developing genetically modified crops to develop biofuels. The agriculture sector is important. With more productive seeds, we can avoid deforestation and help Africa deal with the climate difficulty they already face. It is unclear how cheap biofuels can be, but if they are cheap, it can solve the aviation and truck emissions, Gates wrote, responding to a question in Ask Me Anything session on social media platform Reddit in March. Bill and Melinda Gates own one of the largest private land portfolios in the United States. The Land Report magazine reported in January that Bill and Melinda Gates have assessed, amassed excuse me, the largest portfolio of private farmland in the United States 
a $171 million purchase of 14,500 acres of prime eastern Washington farmland in 2018 gave the power couple an estimated 242,000 acres of farmland, which is nearly the size of Hong Kong. Holy moly. This is part of a broader 269,000 acre land portfolio belonging to the couple and associated entities across 19 states with the largest holdings in Louisiana, 69,071 acres, Arkansas, 47,927 acres, and Arizona, 25,750 acres. The couple's acquired farmland is owned through private investment company Cascade Investments. This company also owns shares in plant-based protein companies Beyond Meat and Impossible Foods, as well as agricultural equipment maker John Deere. Hmm. Why is John why is Bill Gates buying John Deere? That's weird. Anyway, moving on, sorry. That's another thing to kind of kick around in your headpiece for a little bit. The investment company's single largest acquisition of farmland came in 2017 when it paid $520 million to purchase 61 properties from the Canada Pension Plan Investment Board, CPPIB. This parcel apparently makes up the bulk of a billionaire couple's land farmland holdings. It was previously owned by Agriculture Company of America a real estate investment trust acquired by CPPIB in 2013. In January, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation announced that it would create a nonprofit entity called Gates Ag One that will speed up efforts to provide smallholder farms in developing countries with access to affordable tools and innovations they need to sustainably improve crop production and adapt to the effects of climate change. The farmland acquired by Gates appeared to be earmarked for genetical, genetically engineered corn and soy crops, the base foods for what will become synthetic, ultra-processed products like synthetic meat. In 2019, it was reported that Impossible Burger was faced a shortage of soy because it relied on farms that didn't use genetically modified seeds, Impossible Foods, had seen a huge surge in demand for its Impossible Burger product that year. It has become a marquee brand in one of the hottest sectors of the food business. Impossible Foods makes plant-based protein that can be fashioned into burgers. Its goal is to help eliminate the need for animals for, from the meat supply. By 2035... Its goal is to help eliminate the need for animals from the meat supply by 2035. <laughs> I hope people can read between the lines on that one. But its products rely on GMOs and heavy use of herbicides and pesticides. One other use for the farmland Gates has acquired is to grow crops for biofuel. Gates is not new to the biofuel industry. In 2016, he joined French giant Total in investing $14 million in biofuel specialist Renmetics. Renmetics has developed a process that converts plant waste and biomass into sugars that can be converted into biofuels and bioversions of chemicals. The patent plant roast process uses supercritical water to reduce the cost of converting biomass to cellucostic, cellucostic sugars, the critical intermediary for second-generation biochemicals and biofuels. To effectively address climate change, we need to develop an energy infrastructure that doesn't emit greenhouse gas and is cost-competitive. A critical component in this effort must be to decarbonize the industrial, industrial sector, Gates said at the time. Another is the possibility of cost-competitive com biofuels 
Renmatix provides an innovative process that is an exciting pathway to pursue. He has not elaborated on his plans yet, but Gates will apparently use plant waste and biomass from his farmland to develop biofuels. This means bio sludge from human waste will be spread on farms to grow mo more GMOs, all to save the planet, in quotations. <laughs> okay, okay. I'm not buying that. How about you? You know, yes, there is pollution. A lot of these huge industrial countries are big polluters. But here's something that I was thinking about last night. That when pollution or carbon monoxide and dioxide is manufactured and cut down and broken down naturally, there, it, it produces oxygen and other essential chemicals for us to live and breathe and, and be who we are. Um, our population has grown so exponentially, exponentially um, that I don't think Mother Nature in that cycle of the real cycle of uh, photosynthesis and that could produce enough oxygen for all of humankind. Just think about how many people are on this earth. It's actually insane when you think about it. It's kind of disgusting that there's that many people that... And here we are complaining about this and that. You know, um... I don't know, a long time ago I used to think countries that kind of, you know, said one or two kids and that's it was kind of crazy and, you know, not. But now I, then I think about it and it makes sense. Do we need more people on this planet? I don't think so. Just pushing everything into our cities the more the, our population grows this is something pretty i don't know interesting funny that i that i stumbled across and uh it has something to do with agenda 2030 <laughs> in case you didn't already know the global elites are satanic and they are embedding satanic symbols into their plans because they believe it imbues them with magic power. At one stage, I thought this was ridiculous until I started researching it and discovered that our global elites absolutely do believe in practice satanic occultism. We already knew that. This is what someone else wrote. I'm just sharing. <laughs> Agenda 2030 is satanic numerology. 2030 encodes 23, which satanic numerology often uses to represent an infinite string of sixes, given that the factor two-thirds corresponds to 66.66666%, hence also the UN title, Agenda 2030. Further, satanic alpha numerology includes... Corona, C, so Corona is six letters, then C is the third letter, O is the 15th, R is the 18th, O is the 15th, N is the 14th, and A is the first, which equals 66. Six plus 66, not plus, but 666. Coincidence? I don't think not. I, don't, I think not, I mean... Because uh, that, that, that right there, my friends, is some pretty nifty stuff for someone that just started to discover that the elite are satan, satanic practicing members and this and that. Um, <clears throat> that's pretty crazy. I thought, I thought you guys would enjoy that a little. Corona, six letters, C, the third letter. Oh, the 15th, R, the 18th, 
O the 15th, N the 14th, A the 1st, equals 66. 6, 6, 6. <laughs> wow. Insanity. This last little bit of info I want to share is something I stumbled upon. Um, I do believe that the government, and when I say government, I use a broad umbrella. just don't mean our government. I mean the, the New World Order government. Um, with their extensive research in the super soldier program and this and that, I do believe that if need be, the government will uh, release the super soldiers against the human population um, just so we can comply and be very good little people. The Pentagon says it's all new AI can see events days in advance. Days in advance. The United States military is testing the use of cutting-edge data-gathering tools combined with artificial technology and intelligence to predict enemies' next moves up to days in advance. Speaking at a press conference, the commander of the United States Northern Command, NORTHCOM, Glenn Venherick, revealed that trials have been ongoing to improve the military's use of data when making key strategic decisions. With the third part of an initiative called the Global Information Dominance Experiment, or GID, showing promising results. Dude, that's a scary name. The uh, Global Information Dominance Experiment. Now, if that doesn't spell Great Reset or New World Order, I don't know what does. Anyway, guide or GID was designed to increase access to real-time information that can help leaders prepare for enemy action and hopefully detour it, rather than react to conflict once it is started. The latest experiment carried out by the Pentagon saw 11 United States commands simulate the takeover of a crucial site, such as the Panama Canal. Van Herrick explained that during the simulated operation, data was gathered from various sensors spread out across the globe, both military or civilian. The information was the run-through an AI model capable of detecting patterns and giving the alert when spotting signs like a submarine preparing to leave port, for example, knowing what the enemy may be preparing to do in advance. Let command officers take measures such as deploying troops. In an effort to detour conflict. Yeah, okay. What we've seen is the ability to get further away, what I call left, left of being reactive or actually being proactive, Van Herrick. And I'm not talking minutes and hours, I'm talking days Deployed to a wider force for real-world situations, the technology could put together information in real time from existing satellites, radars, undersea sensors, as well as cyber and intel, and make it available through the cloud for the AI to process. The ability to see days in advance creates decision space, decision space for me as an operational commander to potentially posture forces to create deterrence opinion options to provide that to the secretary or even the president. All of this information is already available, stressed Van Herrick. But we did currently take hours and days for dedicating analysis to browse through the mountains of data that are being generated every day before noticing patterns of interest. Keep in mind that it's not new information, it's information that today is just not analyzed and processed until later in the time cycle. 
And all we are doing is taking and sharing it and making it available sooner so that our key decision makers will have options versus being reactive where they may be forced to take some kind of escalation option. The algorithms described by Van Herrick could look at average number of cars in a parking lot in the enemy's location, for instance. It could count the airplanes parked on a ramp and trigger a warning when noticing change. And it could even spot missiles being prepared to launch. This could provide the Pentagon, Pentagon with days of advanced warning. Using AI to better inform military decisions is a key objective that the Pentagon has made clear for some time, especially as other countries ramp up the use of technology in the defense sector. But the growth of automation tools in warfare is rising serious concerns among some advocacy groups that algorithms might be empowered to inform life and death decisions and eventually even to make those decisions themselves. The guide experiments, in fact, were carried out together with other groups within the United States Department of Defense, including Project Maven, an initiative that sparked controversy in 2008 when Google employees rebelled against the company's involvement in the initiative. But the growth in automation tools and warfare is raising serious concerns among the advocacy groups that algorithm may be empowered to inform life or death decisions and eventually even make those decisions themselves. The guide experiments, in fact, were carried out together with other groups within the United States Department of Defense, including Project Maven, an initiative that sparked controversy in 2018 when Google employees rebelled against the company's involvement in that initiative after Google was contracted to help build the technology for Project Maven, which aimed to develop AI that could spot humans and objects in large amounts of video captured by the military. Thousands of staff signed a petition calling for the company to pull out. Employees cited fears that they would be involved in an initiative that would contribute to identifying potential targets. Van Herrick, for his part, was keen to address concerns over the U.S., over the use of AI in guide trials. Humans still make all decisions, and what I'm talking about, he said, we don't have machines making decisions. We are not relying on our computers to take us to create deterrence options or defeat options. According to the Van Herrick, the software ca capabilities trialed and guide are already available and ready to be fielded across combatant commands to further improve the impact of technology, he continued, will also require collaboration with international allies and partners who are expected to be brought in to participate in what could be a global exchange of real-time intelligence. Now, I am exhausted. <clears throat> I, after diving down this rabbit hole, <laughs> I think I went to bed for like two or three hours last night. I couldn't sleep. Maybe I did. I fell asleep for a couple, like literally two or three hours. But I don't think I was asleep the whole time. Um, I laid in bed, tossed and turned. And uh, I just, I'm astonished at what is going on. And how, how uninformed we are, but yet the, we aren't, you know, um, we're only uninformed because we're turning a blind eye. That's the real deal. Everything's in front of us. You just have to look and know where to look and talk to other people that are just as interested in this as and I'm not saying interested in this is interesting conspiracy theories or whatever I'm not saying that I'm saying interested in what's going on in our lives the control the government is having on us this right here agenda 2030 and 
the New World Order, is modeled after modern-day China. All right? That's the deal. Modern-day China is what would fit in the elite's best interest. Knowing everything about us, knowing what we're doing, know where we are. And if, we, if it, they know where we are and we're doing something bad, they eliminate the threat. Excuse me, let me suck on some tea here. And by eliminating the threat, they can shut us up and they can keep the other uh, sheep quiet and all herded together. Um, but the more that we learn, the better we are. Um, for those of you, I had mentioned William Cooper, Behold the Pale Horse, Behold the Pale White Horse. Buy that book. It may be on Kindle. I have a soft cover of it. Buy the book. It is probably one of the most amazing books I've ever read in my entire life, and I have read a ton of books. It talks about so much. It, it blew my mind away when I read it. I mean, literally, it talks about Kennedy, uh, UFOs, Tuskegee, and much more. Much, much more. And uh, he suffered the ultimate price with his life for trying to bring light to the people of America. Just trying to open that shade so we could all see. And they took him out in his front yard. And then didn't have medical health come for a couple hours until he was long dead. Disgusting. Just absolutely disgusting. All right, folks, a lot of just very interesting information. We've talked about robotic super soldiers and such, but with AI technology, is that going to make it easier for the government to hunt these things down or easier for them to create? I don't know. It seems like it's going to be a scary future. Guys, with that being said, thank you for supporting the channel. Your support is what makes this channel continue to grow and go, and honestly, what makes it a safe and special place for people to want to share their experiences, ideas, and theories with no judgment, no, no kind of ridicule, just respect. Thank you. It's all on you. Everyone stay safe, happy, healthy, and ever vigilant, keeping an eye on our children, pets, family, and friends. These creatures are real. They're out there. They're dangerous. Share this information with those you love and care about, and it may just help save their lives someday. Until next time, never stop asking questions, never stop searching for the truth, and God bless.